I went at night to the secret headquarters. I was blindfolded, and I'd been through this process many times. I was taken in a car. I was then put into another car with our men in the back. I was taken to what I believe was an underground car park beneath an apartment building. And I was told to get out. There was a trap door in the floor. I was told to jump down. And I jumped down and was pushed across the room and the door closed behind me. And when I took my blindfold off, I was in a tiled cell. And I realized at that point that I was no longer a negotiator. I was a captive myself. Tonight's event was very much built around Terry's remarkable story <laughs> and the hope and maybe the expectation of the audience was that somehow the science was going to come in and explain it all away. I'm afraid we're a very long way from that. I mean, exceptional people like Terry and their ability to deal with situations that very few people can and certainly most of us would not want to face are a real challenge for science. Science, particularly the biological sciences, tends to give us general descriptions of the average, the average way in which a mouse reacts to things, maybe sometimes the average way in which a person reacts to things. Those sorts of approaches don't deal well with a truly exceptional person dealing with a, a truly extraordinary situation like Terry's. I had to find some way of surviving in that situation. And the first thing I said was to myself, Take this as an opportunity, not as a total disaster. Now is the time to take an interior journey, to get to know yourself better, to begin to explore in a region, if you can. Of course, the brain is a part of the body. And, you know, insofar as you need to exercise the body, you need to exercise the brain. And I was exercising the brain as best I could. I couldn't have a lot of physical exercise, which you know, I'm not too sorry about because I never really enjoyed it, but uh, I did feel I needed it. But at least I could exercise my brain and somehow by doing that, it seemed to give my body strength as well. Well, first of all, they came into the cell and told me I had five hours to live. And I lay on the floor and I slept. And I'd remembered something that I'd read many years previously from the writings of the late Carl Jung, the Swiss psychotherapist, who said, when you're in a situation of extremity, allow your body to come to your aid, and it will. That may have been my body coming to my aid, just to give me some respite from the tension of that situation. Terry himself said, and I think it's something we'd all understand, uh, that it might be a question of a mind over matter, that somehow his mind was able, in some circumstances, to take control of the situation, to make rules for how he was going to think and act and control his body. He also said that on other, other occasions he felt that his, his body was essentially running him. He was an observer in what his brain and his body were doing. That is an interesting, um, an interesting contrast. To a, to a scientist and a physicalist, someone who thinks that all of our behaviour and our actions, our, all of our feelings and our emotions are the product of what our brains are doing, this is really difficult to understand. The way in which we have the feeling that we, whatever we are, this, this entity, this, the helmsman that we feel we have inside our bodies who's in control, the agent, can take over. Can, can decide what to do with its brain. That's a concept that just does not fit with our current understanding of, of neuroscience. We have to provide an explanation of that kind of exceptional ability to organize your mind and your mental functions so as to change the organization of your own brain. Scientific inquiry doesn't just mean being in an esoteric realm, you know, solely for uh, the, the place for academics, if you like. It's to do with our everyday life. It's to do with how we live now and how we shall live tomorrow. And somehow this festival tries to relate that and make it real for people. And I think people who came to the seminar today at least found a little bit of that. We live in a world that's full of suffering. But I think the experience has shown me that in most cases, probably not all, but in most cases, 
suffering need not destroy. The brain can somehow turn it and it can be used eventually to create a creative end. Thank you very much.